Let's see now how an unruptured tubal pregnancy can be managed. Here the presentation is silent. Patient is hemodynamically stable. She just has a mass and on ultrasound you may see that there is a gestational sac outside the uterine cavity. There may be a fetal pulse in yolk sac. Fetal cardiac activity may be seen. Beta HCG if you do, the doubling time would be more. Within 48 hours, the rise will be less than 66%. So in such patients who are hemodynamically stable, having an ectopic pregnancy, we can manage it at three different, by three different methods. One can be expectant, one can be conservative, and the other one is surgical. Now every mode of treatment has some criteria. Expectant management, the indications are, if the initial beta HCG levels are less than 1000 units per liter, or there are falling titers of beta HCG. That means that is an indication that this pregnancy is not going to grow. This is anyways going to get aborted or the fetus is going to die. The ectopic mass is less than 4 centimeters. There is no evidence of bleeding or rupture. And the most important thing is this patient is very, very reliable. She will come back for follow-up as per the requirements the moment we call her, us we call her she would be there for follow-up and in case if there is an emergency like she bleeds or suddenly there is rupture then she would be coming back to the hospital only in such cases we can go for expectant management now what is conservative management the indications are the patient is hemodynamically stable beta hcg levels surely higher than the one which we have seen just now Beta but less than 10,000 international units per liter and falling titers. Ectopic mass is less than 4 cm. There is no fetal cardiac activity. Now this is not an absolute contraindication means suppose fetal cardiac activity is there. It's not an absolute contraindication for conservative management. But chances that this management would be successful are less. Once there is live fetus with fetal cardiac activity, there is always a chance that there may be rupture any moment. So while choosing such a patient, we have to be extra careful. There shouldn't be any evidence of bleeding or rupture. And again, most important point, patient should be reliable with good follow. Now what is conservative medical management? We have different drugs to be used. Either we can use them, administer them surgically, that is SAM, surgically administered medical management under ultrasound or laparoscopic guidance. The drugs used are methotrexate, potassium chloride, prostaglandins, mifibristone, hyperosmolar glucose, actinomycin D and vasopressin. Mostly methotrexate, potassium chloride and prostaglandins are preferred. Even mifibristone can be used. So under ultrasound guidance, we can inject the drugs in the ectopic sac under laparoscopy or UHC guidance. Systemic therapy can also be useful in which we can give methotrexate systemically. The dose is 50 mg per square meter and leucovirin has to be given along with methotrexate. Conservative surgical management. In conservative surgical management, the approach can be laparoscopic or bilaparotomy. Laparoscopic is preferred because this is a young patient. We have, this is a kind of uh, minimal invasive surgery, small scar, less chances of adhesion formation post-operatively. So her fertility henceforth would be reassured instead of going for laparotomy in such patients. In conservative surgeries, we try to save the fallopian tube. We don't take out that segment or we don't take out that fallopian tube as the way we do for radical surgery. Linear salpingostomy, where we just open, take out the products and open, let it open, uh, let the tube remain open. Linear salpingotomy, we open with a small incision, take out the products and reclose it. Segmental resection and reanastomosis means the segment which has ectopic pregnancy, we just take out that segment and we do anastomosis of two ends where the tube is again left for normal physiological function and expression from the distal end of the tube. Like we express out, that is called as milking, that ectopic sac is expressed out through the fimbrial end and tube is conserved. So these are conservative surgical management modes.
all these conservative surgical management mode are done where fertility is needed to be conserved but it has a risk all these patients are again having a big risk of having recurrence of ectopic pregnancy so we have to counsel the patient before choosing that mode and patient should understand that what this management is going to give her what would be the consequences and in next pregnancy she has to be careful the moment she misses a period or the moment she has some symptoms she has to immediately come to the hospital get the pregnancy confirmed and we have to see to it that the pregnancy is intrauterine and not an ectopic pregnancy again definitive treatment salpingectomy over here we are taking out that portion of fallopian tube or that side fallopian tube completely usually this is done where the family is complete or in case family is not complete but it is recurrence of tubal pregnant pregnancy again on that side so there is no point conserving such a tube or in case uncontrolled bleeding this salpingectomy can be done laparoscopically or it can be done by laparotomy now there are certain terminologies used in ectopic and questions may be asked on these they are typical of ectopic pregnancy one is areas stellar reaction in this Typical adenomatous endometrial glands are seen because of progesterone effect. There is a pregnancy in the body, even though it's not in the uterus, it is somewhere else. So the corpus luteum which secretes progesterone, the effect of which is on the endometrial gland, and there is adenomatous change. This reaction is not specific to ectopic. It suggests pregnancy either intrauterine or extrauterine. Usually. there is another typical case seen in ectopic pregnancy that passage of decidual cast as the pregnancy is outside the uterus the decidua which is formed in the endometrial cavity gets passed in the form of a cast and it's called decidual cast usually this is this separation occurs in decidua parietalis and chorionic villi are absent in this again mcq can be asked on this the decidual cast is lacking in chorionic villi because the pregnancy is not in the uterine cavity another terminology again important salpingitis isthmica nodosa it is a non inflammatory pathological condition in which tubal epithelium extends into the myosalpings to form a diverticulum and in this diverticulum or in this pocket ectopic is very commonly seen so this is again and can be an mcq that salpingitis systemica nodosa will be a predisposing factor for ectopic pregnancy now we have certain criteria for abdominal pregnancy now for primary abdominal pregnancy we have study ford's criteria when we can say that this pregnancy is primarily abdominal pregnancy whenever you have evidence of an abdominal pregnancy you have to go and check both the tubes and the ovaries they should be intact there should not be any evidence that either by silent rupture the pregnancy has come out of the tube and then landed in the peritoneal cavity then it becomes secondary abdominal pregnancy or there should not be any evidence on any ovary that it was an ovarian pregnancy and then became secondary abdominal pregnancy so both the tubes and the ovaries should be absolutely normal there shouldn't be any presence of utero peritoneal fistula again to say that this pregnancy has not landed from the uterine cavity into the peritoneal cavity so there shouldn't be any fistula present and the pregnancy must be related to peritoneal surface exclusively if that pregnancy fulfills these criteria then we can call it as primary abdominal pregnancy study ford's criteria is again very favorite question in case of ovarian ectopic Spiegelberg has given us criteria to label that pregnancy as ovarian ectopic. Tube should be intact. Again, to say that it's not a tubal pregnancy landed in ovarian tissue, so tube on that particular side should be intact. Gestational sac should be seen at the ovarian position. And when we take out that pregnancy, the histopathological examination should show ovarian tissue in its wall. Then only we can say it's an ovarian ectopic pregnancy. cervical pregnancy rubins has set the criteria as for this because uterus and cervix are very close to each other uterine and cervical pregnancy are little uh, closer and difficult to differentiate as such uterus should be smaller in size 
and cervix is distended because it is cervical pregnancy so that is distending the cervical cavity uterine cavity is normal internal os is closed that means the pregnancy is not coming down from the uterine cavity internal os is closed and the pregnancy is totally below internal os in the cervical region no placental tissue in endometrial curettage means once you take out this pregnancy and perform dnc or endometrial curettage and send a sem separate sample of the endometrium that sample should not show any placental tissue to confirm it histopathologically that pregnancy is not coming from uterus an external os will naturally be open because of distension of the cervical cavity due to this pregnancy